Hi, this is uh, Deepthi from IBM Research Bangalore and today I'm going to talk about AI testing. Now, when we talk about AI testing, there are two related uh, terminologies come. Uh, the one is where we use AI uh, techniques for improving software testing and the other one where we use testing techniques or traditional techniques for testing AI models, okay? And in this case, uh, we would like to uh, go with the later. So when we talk about AI testing, it is about testing of AI models. Okay. Uh, now this uh, field of AI testing is an overlap field between the software engineering and the AI. And there already exists a survey uh, by Mark Herman and team on this topic. So if you're interested uh, more about this, um, Field, then I think uh, machine learning testing survey is a very good starting point. Okay. Uh, today I'm going to talk about mostly the work which has done in IBM Research. Okay. So, uh, but uh, only a part of it, it occurs in the survey. Okay. Now let's start with the difference between what software testing and AI testing. Then and this difference actually motivated us to uh, do research on software in AI testing. Okay. So. So in software testing, ML testing differs in many dimensions and just uh, putting some of the dimensions here, okay. So in software testing, we typically test the code, whereas in ML testing, uh, we, we test the data as well as we test the model and the model can be um, available in white box as well as black box, okay. So when we talk about data testing, which means that how ready is this data or, or what's the quality of the data uh, for building an AI model, okay. Um, in software testing, it's mostly uh, tabular data, which is present where in ML testing, there are various modalities of the, um, like text image, uh, tabular time series data are all present there. Okay, so we need to actually uh, generate techniques for cater to all uh, modalities, okay. Uh, the test oracle, which finds out what's the correct uh, result for the test case is defined by the developer, but I think for ML testing, it is very hard to define uh, and it is an active area of research, okay. Uh, the adequacy criteria, like for example, in coverage and mutation scores in software testing um, is already well defined, okay. So there are part coverage criteria, there are uh, statement branch coverage criteria, okay. But such criteria are only under development, uh, under research in uh, ML testing. And software testing also talks about, you know, uh, exceptions and crash and IO and concurrency errors where in ML testing, you talk about various different kinds of properties like correctness, robustness, efficiency, like uh, fairness and interpretability and this. Now, our work in MBM research about the uh, testing is mostly about automated testing capabilities in which we, are, we generate, automatically generate new test cases to test various uh, models and various types of models and uh, for their various properties, okay. So here we are specifying, okay, there are three modalities that we cover here. Like uh, one is the structured data, which is the tabular data, the unstructured data, which is related to text only, and and about the time series, okay. And the structured data, there are diff two different kinds of models that we consider, mostly the classifier model, and the other one is the forecasting model, okay, uh, for time series data. And there are various other properties of, uh, such models that we consider uh, and those properties involve the accuracy uh, as well as different fairness properties and robustness properties, okay. So these is basically the entire landscape of the techniques that we have developed here. Uh, and this is very different from the existing um, literature where you will see that most AI uh, literatures, most literature papers are for uh, image testing and, and they talk about mostly on the robustness property, okay. Whereas here we are talking about all other properties, okay. okay. So for today, we are going to talk about only the structured uh, properties like accuracy, group discrimination, individual discrimination, robustness, and how can we generate automatically test cases to test those properties. Um, and, um, and, and for question answer session, we can all uh, discuss about, uh, you know, text classifier testing as well as time series testing. Okay, so, um, so I'm open for questions for all these entire landscape that we are presenting here. Okay. Now, 
as we can, as we previously said, right, there are two types of models, okay, white box model and black box model, depending on what information we can access about the model, okay. And the testing techniques actually differ quite a lot based on uh, whether it's a white box and black box, okay. So, for example, coverage and metrics, okay, um, they can be deferred on white box, uh, for, for white box model on the internals of the model. So, for example, we can say neuron coverage for uh, deep neural networks. Uh, whereas, uh, and the metrics can be also defined on the embedding layer, okay, um, output. Whereas the black box model, it is, the metrics can be defined only on the output of the final layer, okay, uh, which, which is the uh, classification output. And uh, the, the coverage notion has to be defined on the, again, on the characteristics of the black box model, which is very hard to define, okay. So, so we define something called a path coverage that we want to, uh, that we'll explain, okay. And the algorithms are also differ, okay, for white box and black box model. Typically, in white box model, we talk about gradient based algorithms, which can be used for effective test case generation, whereas in black box model for effective test case generation, we have to do some kind of approximation of the model, uh, of the of, of the model to, to see how, how to generate test cases where um, the test case will fail. So, so yeah, so for this talk, we are going, only going to look about, uh, talk about the black box AI testing. And um, it is, it's an important case where, because if you define some AI testing techniques for black box model, it is, it becomes model, model agnostic. It is applicable for various kinds of models and, and uh, and so therefore it's important to cover many such models using using a single AI testing technique. Now automated test case generation where we are trying to do these are the typical goals that we want to um, achieve. Uh, the first one is that it is the test case test data has to be realistic okay with respect to the training data. Um, because if 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 we are generating unrealistic test data and and we are uh, testing that and there is a test case failure when when people look at the data later on they might say that okay that this is uh, th this will not occur in practice and therefore we um, this is definitely a, a, a false positive okay so so such realistic test data we need to generate which uh, follows the distribution which exists in the training data okay the second one is about effectiveness that probability of test case failure should be high uh, we don't want to generate test cases where we will all pass, okay, right? So we would like to have some uh, investigation about the model that how we can uh, make sure that we can generate test cases such that it, it might fail. Then the model coverage, okay? So we talked about model coverage where we know that we have to define certain metrics about model coverage and how much uh, test cases that we are generating, how much percentage of the um, metric related to the model it covers, okay? And it also has to have a variety, okay. Uh, so this may be a little bit conflicting notion than realisticness, okay. So you would like to generate test cases um, which can occur in practice, but which is not captured by the training data. So for example, you you are uh, generating a model which, let's say, with the training data, which is male-female ratio of one is to one, okay. Uh, whereas uh, you want to test in a, uh, you want to deploy the model and it's going to, Get a payload data where the male female ratio is two is to one, okay, and under that ratio whether it's uh, whether it's going to be fair or not, okay, right? So that's one uh, one thing that we'd like to test, okay. Right? So the user can actually define such variety, and we would like we can cater to gen generation of test cases using those variety, okay. And lastly, it has to be explainable in the sense that um, we, we can see that existing test cases, why we have generated such test cases. And explainability is definitely an important notion in AI, which we, which we would like to actually incorporate in our test case generation uh, techniques also. So here is the entire uh, framework of uh, structured data test case generation for testing black box model, okay. So we start with the training data and infer its constraints from the training data. These constraints are really these distribution, statistical distribution of different columns and the association relationship of different columns in, in the training data, okay. So it is basically uh, summarizing the characteristics of the training data, okay. 
Um, now, if we actually give this constraint to a constraint solver, and uh, which can basically generate test cases for different properties. Okay. Now, uh, for different properties, we have to generate test cases differently, which we'll explain. Okay. Um, so, so there is a different flavor there. But ultimately, the, there is the for realistic test case generation, we have to actually use a constraint solver, which takes those distribution property of the training data and, and generate uh, similar test cases. Okay. But uh, that's only will cover the realistic test case generation. But let's say we want to actually um, have the coverage notion also. We want to cover as much as proper, as much as some characteristics of the model. So what we define is the as a characteristic uh, called path coverage, okay, and which can be applied for any model. So what we say is that we will have a decision tree, which is uh, a surrogate of the given target model, okay. So it is approximating the behavior of the uh, target model and with high fidelity and once we have defined such um, surrogate model we can say okay since it's a decision tree there exists explicit paths and the paths has constraints so it is like a, a program and we can define path coverage on that program okay or, and such coverage techniques coverage criteria can be used along with the uh, constraints which are there obtained from the training data to to uh, to generate tests which has the coverage as well as which has the realisticness. Okay, and additionally we have the notion of user-defined constraints where we can apply uh, the variations which is defined by the user, and all these constraints can be merged together and generate data uh, for satisfying the properties for, for testing these properties. Okay, okay. so these are. Uh, all these important parts that we want to cover uh, in this. Okay. So let's start with this properties. Okay. So what kind of properties that we want to like, test? Okay. And what kind of test cases that we want to generate for this? Okay. So uh, so let's say uh, accuracy. Okay. So accuracy is the most easiest stuff. In fact, most uh, tester actually test uh, their accuracy models accuracy before deploying. Okay. So it just says whether my uh, label for corresponding data which have been for the model is seen as the gold standard label or not, okay? And there's a challenge here because we have not really uh, defined uh, what would be the gold standard for automated test case generated, okay, right? So gold standard typically defined for uh, the, the data that we obtained from there. And in we are generating this kit, what, how can we get the gold standard that remains a, a unsolved problem, okay, right? So, so accuracy testing for data synthesis based um, testing has a challenge which is not uh, there for normal accuracy testing, okay? Then there are two notions of group fairness and individual fairness, okay? Uh, in group fairness, we, we check whether the model is giving um, favorite, it's uh, showing some favoritism for a privilege uh, class than with respect to our privilege class. So, for example, if gender is a protected attribute, we define male as a privilege class and uh, female as a privilege class, and we let's say we have a lone uh, deciding um, uh, test cla uh, classifier, okay, and we can see whether it's uh, altogether showing some. Uh, favorable outcome towards the male compared to the female, okay? So if male is giving 70% 70, 70 uh, favorable outcome, then the female is getting 30% favorable outcome, then there is a much difference between these two um, uh, attributes, okay? And therefore, uh, there is a disparate impact produced, okay? So there is uh, unfairness present there, okay? The individual fairness talks about uh, decisions on the sample level, not on all the samples in two group levels, as we have seen for group fairness. Okay. So in individual fairness, we talk about we take two samples, and if one is a male and one is a female, all of the attributes are similar. If they are two getting two different um, results, okay, then we can say um, that you know they, they are, there is a discrimination, there is a test failure. Okay. So the interesting part is that for all non-protected attributes for for what values are non product attributes, we will see this behavior, okay? So the test case uh, generation procedure will try to figure out uh, that. The adversarial robust is very similar to the individual fairness, where we are not just uh, change, seeing the change in the gender attribute, which is the product attribute, but we can actually change any other attribute and by small amount and see whether they are given two different labels or not. Okay. Yeah. 
So the test cases are defined as pairs for individual and adversarial robustness. Uh, now let's see our constraint work. Okay, so we obtain constraints from um, the structured data, and there are two types of constraints. One is a single attribute constraints, the other one is a multi attribute constraints. And single attribute constraints uh, actually differs from different categories of the, of the data, different types of the data. If it's a numeric, we'll get the distribution, whether it's a normal or alpha or beta distribution, and the min, max, and an average kind of properties. Okay. For categories, we'll look at the frequency distribution. Okay. For text, we'll look at whether it's a pattern. Uh, regex pattern which is um, uh, describing the text or if it's like a comments and all we can also see whether it's what's the classic uh, sentiment of those uh, comments okay and for dates we can actually um, figure out what's the format of the date and all of them okay and for multi-attribute we find out what is the different correlation between two different attributes okay so for its numeric numeric attributes we'd like to have so okay, there's a polynomial relationship for category categorical attributes we'll see the frequency distribution um, for category numeric okay we'll see for male maybe there is age exists with normal distribution for female age exists with a beta distribution with different parameters okay if there are two dates maybe the difference in the date lies within a range so that those kind of relationship we can actually capture uh, through our constraint inference but in the user specified constraint of course we we can change any of those constraints we obtain from the uh, um, this thing okay from from the uh, constraint inference engine as well as add other constraints like where uh, for example we can see the um, we can generate test cases where five percent is a random data and 95 percent is the data which is uh, taken from uh, the data synthesis from training data constraints okay so such specification can be done okay. so now let's look at the our uh, decision tree builder and the coverage which defines the model path curve, okay so we use the existing technique called uh, tree pan to approximate uh, the behavior of the these uh, any given black box model by a decision tree model and once we got, got the decision tree uh, which one of this is defined here okay we can actually define the notion of path coverage on the decision tree okay and we can define for each path what's the decision tree constraints and apply add those constraints to our uh, to the data constraints that we have okay so uh, let's now look at constraints the data generation procedure so let's say i have to generate data for the salary okay and it's a numeric with integer okay and um, let's say it's given in the range 1000 to 2000 so i can actually generate uh, data uh, which is ranging from uh, 1000 to 2000 using uh, let's say uniform distribution okay now let's say i add more constraints like if, if the distribution has to be normal okay and so then we start generating data which is uh, between range uh, 1000 to 2000 with normal distribution okay so now i have more so let's say there is another uh, attribute called um, gender okay where the male female ratio is two is to one okay and so we can generate data uh, in, in ratio of two is to one for the um, for, for for the column um, male and female okay and now there is a relationship between let's say the gender and the salary okay so male salary distribution is also normal with some other parameter and, and uh, uh, female salary distribution is normal with the different parameters so then we what we can take is that using the male female ratio which existed for each male female ratio we can actually generate data uh, satisfying the distribution and we can get the salary data as follows okay right okay so more and more so we can generate data by considering the constraints which exist um, in the uh, association as well as the constraints which exist in the data. Now, here is a generic algorithm. Okay, so what we define is a constraint dependency graph where um, each node in that graph has a column. Okay, and the edge is actually, and each node has all the constraints. The edge in the graph uh, defines the um, 
uh, constraints, association constraints, and we'll first remove the cycles there, okay? And as we have shown that how to handling, how uh, we're handling the association constraint to generate data, we can start with, let's say there is a numerical column and we can take the categorical column, generate uh, the categorical data first in topological order of the tag and uh, generate uh, the categorical data with numerical data, okay? And so let's say if there are multiple categorical data, then uh, it becomes a very interesting problem. So we can actually take the categorical numeric relationship, uh, which has a very less divergence with original relation, original distribution of the numeric data, and as well as which caters to the range constraints given by the other categorical column. But if there is a numeric numeric column, but then there is a close polynomial relationship exists between numeric numeric column, then we will that that relationship supersedes the all the categorical numerical relationship. Okay. So this is the generic notion of this thing, and um, and also the labeler becomes input. But as I said, that you know we have to generate labels for the uh, for the accuracy, and um, there we can actually use uh, active learning procedure to generate labels. Also, we have a technique for automatic label synthesis too, okay, which which considers multiple models and, and take a majority voting to generate labels. So just to conclusion, uh, we have covered uh, synthesis, uh, synthesis for uh, structured data, test data synthesis, and what we have not covered our work on text and time series, and we also have a tool which did not we should, did not show the demo. Okay, um, and of course AI testing is a very interesting area of research, and and with, we have to define more properties of AI models that we can test. And we haven't done much work on the white box testing, so I, I think that there is a, a lot of scope for doing research in the white box testing. Okay, okay. thank you.